Having pests is not the end of the world for your plants. We can treat them and keep them under control, just like how I saved these Monstera elbows from thrips and scale infestation. So let's keep calm and deal with it. Hi, this is Jira from Plant Corner. In last week's video, we talked about different ways to prevent pest infestation, but no matter how hard we try, pests can still find a way to our plants. In this video, I want to talk about early signs of five most common houseplant pests. Scale, mealybugs, aphids, spider mites, and thrips, and how to deal with them. The two most important things about pest management that you have to know is that this will not be a one-time fix-all thing. Pest management is a responsibility that plant parents take on a regular basis in order to keep your plants uh, pest free and keep the damage to the minimal. Most pests have the life cycle that span over multiple weeks or months and a lot of them can produce asexually, which means you only need one pest to create a colony on your plant. So they can always return if you treat them once and then you neglect them. Secondly, if the plant is heavily infested, it might not be worth the time and effort and your mental health or capacity to try to get rid of them. There's also risk of other plants getting infested while you're trying to treat this one plant. So for me, I usually recommend if the plant is not rare species, um, if you don't have any mental attachment to them, like this is the plants that belong to your grandparents, I think it's better to just say thank you for bring, thank you for the plants for bringing you joy. Maybe save a cutting or two that are not infested, and then let the plant go. The first pest I want to talk about is scale. They look like small and bumpy brown growth on plant stems and leaves. Looks like tiny little shells. They often cluster in large quantity. The first sign of scale is when the leaves are yellowing and you feel something sticky on the leaves. And when you look at the leaves, you notice some brown little bumps that spreads all over the leaves or part of the leaves. The leaves are yellowing because scale attach themselves onto the leaves and then suck the juice out of that leaf. And they become sticky because scale also produce a waste product called honeydew which is a sticky substrate after they ingest your plant sap. One thing about getting rid of scale is that they have this chill that protects them from oil. So you can't really use the neem oil spray to suffocate them just like you do with other pests. So what I, you really want to do is to physically remove them. First, I would cut off all the leaves that are highly, highly infested. It's not worth saving. Um, and then I would cover the pot just so that if there's any scale that fell into the soil, it doesn't stay in the soil and reproduce more. Then I will spray insecticidal soap and use either your fingernail or a toothbrush or anything basically to like scrape them off just to reveal the bug itself and then spray alcohol mixture on them because that will kill them upon contact and then wipe the leaves off. For alcohol mixture, you just have to mix one part alcohol and three parts water and you can use that to kill the pests uh, once you remove their shell. For scale, I would check the plant once a week for the next two months to make sure that there's no scale left. If heavily infested, you could also use systemic insecticide or arbor because those insecticide kill pests through ingestion and um, it doesn't have to just touch the pest to kill them but if the pest eat the insecticide it will also kill them and poison them from the inside the next pest i want to talk about are mealybugs and mealybugs are a type of scale with this white and cottony looking um, shell they're a little bit harder to deal with than scale in my opinion because they can move around and they usually hide themselves in the crevices between the leaves and the stem or they could be hiding in uh, the leaves, the new leaves that's about to unfurl. The first sign of mealybugs is usually the presence of that white and fuzzy um, spots on your plant, particularly on the new growth and on the stem. In my experience, plants like aglonemas, pothos, hoyas and palms, those get mealybugs easily, especially bamboo palms because there's a lot of behind the leaves and the crevices and behind the sheath that is very easy for the mealybugs to 
start a colony and hide themselves inside. And it can be a nightmare because one mealybug can produce up to 600 eggs. To get rid of mealybugs, and it's very similar to scale, you can't just spray them because that um, fuzzy white thing acts as like a shell for them to prevent oil. You would want to first cut off the leaves that is highly, highly infested, and then use a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol. So dip your Q-tip in the rubbing alcohol and use that to wipe the mealybugs off your plant. When the Q-tip touch the mealybugs, it will turn orange and that's the sign that the mealybugs has died. You want to also focus on the crevices of the plant between the leaves and the stem because that's where a lot of them are hiding. In some cases, if there's a lot of mealybugs on the leaves, I usually just get an um, alcohol wipe and just wipe the leaves off. That way it kills everything up on contact and you can spray them after with bioinsecticide. At the store, we use leswing larvae, which is a type of beneficial bugs that hunt and eat mealybugs and all other soft body insects. We love using them because they can hunt for you where you can't usually reach with your Q-tip or your hand. Beneficial bugs is something that is very, very effective against mealybugs and all other pests. For mealies, I would check the plants once a week for the next two months as well, just to make sure that there's no, nothing is coming back. Um, but if you have the plants that I mentioned before, like aglonemas, pothos, or bamboo palm, you want to spray your plants ever so often just to prevent them from coming back. If your plant is heavily infested, you want to put the systemic granules in the soil or spray arbor insecticide on the leaves. That way when the pest ingest them, they can die right after. And one thing I really want to point it out is for you to really keep calm and don't panic when you see one pest. Because I have had a customer before, saw one mealybug on a leaf of a plant and she managed to put peppermint oil, alcohol, um, spray them, insecticide. And so the plants actually could not take that many substances all at once and then just decline and die um, when she could actually just use a Q-tip, dip it in alcohol and swipe it off. So just be sure to not panic when you're dealing with pests and try to use only one type of spray or insecticide at a time. So if you're using beneficial bugs, you don't want to use any other insecticide because that could potentially kill also your beneficial bugs. The next pest I want to talk about is aphids and the sign of aphids is usually like yellow leaves. Um, stunt growth if your plants stop growing. If you look at the new growth on your plants and there's like this pear-shaped bugs like clustered around the top of the new leaves, that is usually the sign of aphids. Aphids can be green, can be yellow, can be red, can be black. One thing to be careful about aphids is that it can reproduce asexually. So one aphid can create a colony of aphids real quick. The sign that will let you know that there's a colony of aphids is if you find an aphid with wings on it. That means that the space that it has started a colony, it's kind of filled up. So they have to like fly off to find a space on your other plants. To get rid of aphids, again, I would recommend covering the pot with a bag and then you can either take the plant outside or take it to your bathtub and shower the whole plant down, especially on the new growth and just be careful not to damage the new growth. I would hose the whole plant down and then spray them with insecticide. You can spray them with natural insecticide like neem oil solution. You can use Grower's Ally. You could use Arbor. Um, but again, just choose one and I usually like rotate them because I don't want them to build up resistance to one particular insecticide. For aphids, I would repeat the process every few days until I no longer see them coming out. At our store, we also use leswing larvae. Leswing larvae is kind of like a general list, so it's a, it's a type of bugs that hunts everything, eats everything, and, and they are like very... Um, aggressive because if they don't find any pests they would eat each other that's how aggressive they are the next pest is spider mites and I know a lot of plant parents are usually really scared of spider mites because they're so hard to notice because they're so small so 
by the time that you notice the webbing that's already kind of far into the infestation you want to catch them before that happen and one thing you could notice uh, for spider mites it, is that you will see little like white grains on the patio where the leaves touch the stem and that's usually where they got rid of eggs or their exoskeleton so you will kind of see them clustering around the patio area if you have the following plants in your collection i recommend checking for spider mites every week alocasia calathea maranta ficus palm velvet leaf anthurium and velvet leaf philodendrons i don't know why but spider mites they tend to like really like these type of plants especially alocasia and calathea they get spider mites all the time and i think it's because the leaves are so soft and juicy that spider mites really like them for spider mites definitely you want to isolate the plant so make sure that the plant that has spider mites does not touch any other plants or in a different space from your other plants you could put it in the bathroom or you could put it outside where there's no other plants what i would do is to hose it down again cover the soil first and then hose it down in the bathtub and then you would spray the rest of the plants um, with miticide again not insecticide because mites is different from insect but you could use miticide like growers allies or arbor you want to spray both on the front and the back of the leaves and also the stem basically just spray them down until there's some runoff for spider mites i would repeat it every few days so like every three to five days for the next two weeks and after that you can spray once a week for a month but again if you have plants that i mentioned before alocasia calathea um, palm ficus you do want to keep your eyes on them and spray them regularly at the store we use two types of predator mites persimilis and the other one is californicus usually if there's an active infestation we just release them in the store but throughout the year we would just use the little sachet that are slow release packets and just hang them all over the store where there are plants that are easily infested by mites. Another thing you could do uh, for spider mites is to increase the overall humidity level around that area by using a humidifier or putting some of your plants in a grow tent um, because mites usually don't fare well with higher humidity level. Lastly, let's talk about thrips. Thrips are not super common, but they're really hard to get rid of. Once one of them gets onto your plant, they start reproducing by themselves right away and their plants can decline really, really fast. The first sign of thrips is usually the discoloration on the leaves. Usually they show up as a streaks or silvery patches in the front of the leaves. You may also notice tiny black specks on the back of the leaves and that's usually their poop. I, I just had a customer that came in last week telling me that his monstera has been doing well for two years suddenly like rapidly declined within the last two weeks and when I see the picture I could tell right away that that's thrip. If your plants are declining rapidly and you're certain that it's not root rot it's probably thrips. To manage the thrips population, just like spider mites, you want to isolate the plant into a different room or different area. I usually recommend spraying the plant down with Captain Jack. This product has spinosad, which is a chemical derived from a bacteria just like arbor. It kills thrips upon contact and ingestion. So it basically paralyzes them and kills them. You could also use Grower's Ally or Arbor and just focus on the front and back of the leaves and also the stem. Repeat the process every five days for the first two weeks and then just do it once a week for the next few months because thrips has a pretty uh, long life cycle and some part of the life cycle is developing in the soil. So you want to make sure that like once the pupa in the soil come back, you also want to get rid of um, the mature one. Or you could add beneficial bugs like skimitats mites that we talked about last time into the soil. That way it kills whatever pupae in the soil as well. In the store, if we have thrips infestation, we usually get minute pirate bugs because these bugs actually hunt thrips for fun. <laughs> uh, they would fly around and also eat thrips 
on your plants. Another beneficial bugs you could use is cucumeris. For this one, you just put them on top of your soil and they will start crawling around and go and kill uh, thrips that's on your plants and also the baby in your soil. And of course, we hang the slow release packets all year long. So those are five most common houseplant pests and how we deal with them. Again, this is a long-term thing. It's not just a one-time spraying now and then nothing will happen. Being a plant parent means that you have that responsibility to observe your plants and also deal with the issue that arises. But that's also the fun in nurturing them, right? Like what's life without some challenges? We might do a video on beneficial bugs later, but if you're interested in getting some bugs for if you have some active infestation and you're living in New York City, I recommend ordering with Michelle um, through the Facebook group NYC Beneficial Insects. We do group order every two weeks and then you could pick loca different locations in New York City to pick up bugs and Michelle can also guide you through the process of what bugs would be perfect for the infestation that you have going on. We usually don't sell them at the store because the bugs has to be shipped overnight and then released within the next few days. So it's better to order through the Facebook group. Um, do feel free to reach out to Michelle on NYC Beneficial Insects in or if you want to start getting rid of pests in a safe, organic and effective way. So if you have any other questions about pests and how to deal with them, feel free to leave them down below or you could DM us on Instagram Plant Corner NYC and I'll me and my team will get back to you as soon as we can. All right, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.